Welcome to the Startup of the Year podcast, where each episode we showcase exciting new companies from around the world. This podcast is produced by Established, creators of the Startup of the Year program. Established is focused on helping organizations with their innovation, startup, and communication strategies. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Startup of the Year podcast. I'm Frank Gruber, the co-founder and co-CEO of Established, co-founder of Established Ventures, and the team behind the Startup of the Year community and this very podcast. And we are so thankful you're here with us today. In this episode, I'm going to share an Ask Me Anything session that our very own Shaw Lathrop did with Ash Kumra at our annual summit. Ash is a wellness entrepreneur and expert. He's a national radio host and top-ranked career coach, and he's building peak platform to improve employee wellness. His radio show, podcast, and live stream segments have featured hundreds and hundreds of influencers that have uh, media credits that include Forbes, uh, the Huffington Post, the Wall Street Journal, and Entrepreneur Magazine. He's also been uh, instrumental in the startup community. He was part of the Startup America efforts and was leading up uh, part of the California chapter, as well as he's been an MC a number of different times in a number of different events, including Wonder Woman Diversity Tech Summit, among others. Before we jump to the interview, though, I wanted to share a little segment from Rich Malloy from Establish and Establish Ventures with the VC Minute. Take it away, Rich. Hi, this is Rich Malloy with Established Ventures, bringing you the VC Minute. Quick advice to help startup founders fundraise better. Let's talk about rewards. Now that I've beat the drum about risk, let's flip that coin and talk about the other side, reward. I can't emphasize enough the magnitude of returns that is needed to generate rewards for a venture investor. It is important because it is ultimately at the heart of every investment decision. I'm going to skip all the math behind this because it's kind of beside the point. If you want to understand venture math economics, there are plenty of resources for that. But let's just get right to the bottom line. Assuming I have a $20 million seed fund, in order for me to be in the top quartile of funds, return capital to my investors, and make some money along the way, I need the combined valuation of all of my companies to be worth $3.5 billion. That could be three investments returning 100 times my initial check, or it could be one investment returning 300 times my initial check. This is at the core of venture capital decision-making. Do I believe that you can multiply your business's value by 300? The path from a seed valuation to 300 times that is fraught with trials and difficulties, betrayals, struggles, and offers for early exits. I've said before, An acquisition offer that's 3x my check would be life-changing money for you, and I would be so genuinely happy for you. But it does almost nothing for my fund returns. Even the positive outcomes have risks for me. So for me, the investor who is not involved in the business and doesn't even have enough influence over you to convince you to tie your shoelaces, there is a risk beast around every damn corner. If I'm going to take on the risk, then I need to be certain there is a reward a massive, massive reward. I've talked before about not talking about exits during your pitch. Your job here is to sell the vision, the big long-term vision about how your startup scales absolutely massively and takes over the whole market. That will get an investor excited. That's all for the VC Minute. Back to you, Frank. Thanks so much, Rich. Super interesting stuff and obviously important for entrepreneurs to understand what it is that drives investors like us, those rewards. And so very helpful tip and thanks for sharing. Speaking of rewards, I wanted to again, invite everyone that's listening, that's running a startup to join our community. For, you know, basically there's a number of opportunities to take, to take part in, including our 2021 Start of the Year Awards. Uh, so if you're a startup, an early stage company, you're just getting going, you have an idea or whatever, join our community. And then there's a number of different events office hours, there's a whole Slack community and a number of other things that we offer regularly. And at the end of the year, we have a big summit where we invite some of our top companies to participate in our annual summit. To participate in those awards and be a part of the summit, you have to be at an early stage company raising less than $5 million in funding, have a functional prototype, more than just an idea. And uh, to do that, you just need to go over to SOTY.link forward slash apply and join our community today. SOTY.link forward slash apply. As I mentioned, the top 100 companies that apply will be a part of our upcoming uh, opportunities at our summit. 
we'll have you know different uh, mentoring sessions so we can connect you with different people showcases and potentially somebody some company is going to take home the title of startup of the year so that's pretty exciting looking forward to it we'll be talking more about that soon the application deadline is september 30th so that's coming up quickly so please get your get your um, application in to join the community and then we'll you know fast track you into that opportunity to potentially be a part of that uh, upcoming summit. Next, I want to take a moment to spread the word about a company that we really appreciate and everything they're doing. The company is Finmark. They were part of our Start of the Year um, awards last year, actually. They're one of the top five companies and did an amazing job. And a, we really feel like it's an important company because of what they're doing and, and doing for the startup community. So those of you that are running companies, you need to, you know, obviously need to know your financial model and financial planning. And they actually, Finmark has a financial planning software for startups, revenue forecasting, cash projections, and runway. So it's one of the few products that we really believe that can help you with that particular problem. And uh, because they're a member of our community, they're actually offering an opportunity for members of the community to join uh, and sign up for a 30-day free trial on us. So just go to est.us forward slash Finmark. Again, that URL or domain is est.us forward slash Finmark and jump on today and get all your financial and cash projections in order. Super important, you don't wanna make mistakes there. Okay, now let's hear from our, our wellness expert and entrepreneur, Ash Kumra. It is such a pleasure to have you here. So thank you for taking the time today. Shaw, I'm so happy to be here. I love everything you and Frank and the whole team is doing. I mean, I've interacted with you for over a year now. And um, honestly, um, I'm so excited that even during this unusual time, you still push forward to not only have a one day, not two day, but a three day conference. That's it's so rad, man. So kudos to you all. Well, the only way we could do it is by people like you dedicating and giving up your time. So you may help make this happen. Uh, so the format for today is this is a, an AMA type session. So we're really, um, we're going to allow people from the audience to type in their questions and then we'll, we'll just have a little bit of a conversation. But I think we decided that a good way to start would actually be to, to kind of put some of this work into practice. Yeah. Um, thanks for that. So Sean and I had had a conversation earlier and you know, one thing that is I think unique about my background is I love business and I love mindfulness and I feel that business and mindfulness go hand in hand. I feel that when you can foresee in advance a situation and visualize it and then take what I call inspired action, that at times could be better than taking just some random action or just, you know, going off of what is going on right now in the day, like something trendy, like, oh, ad rates are down. We got to go buy some, buy some more ads for this uh, content. Or, you know, the newspaper just told me that, you know, trends in digital media, you know, recruiting is up or we got to make a movement. No, like plan in advance the big moves is what I'm trying to tell you um, as often as you can. Not let your environment control you, but you control the environment. And I know that might sound a little matrixy and a little, you know, off to some, but in reality, this is one of the things I have learned from some of the most successful people, even Frank, I've had conversations with Frank offline about, you know, mindfulness, and it's really important to visualize when you can, how you want to see your day or how you want to see your moment or how you want to see, you know, things to come. And this isn't just applicable to business. It's also on a personal level. But for this conversation, um, I'm going to walk you through a very simple, when I mean simple, it's literally going to be a few steps, um, visualization exercise that anyone can do. And the reason why before I do this, I'm making it purposely simple is because I want you to know that you have the ability to do any exercise that I'm sharing or others might be sharing with you on mindfulness because mindfulness is something that starts from you from within and you sharing that without there's no degree there's no phd level yes some people get certification some people get you know teaching credentials i myself have you know yoga teaching training um that i did over pandemic just to like further my own journey on a yoga side and i've done some meditation programs but even without all that um i am focused on one thing which is evolution, self-growth. And as long as you have that mindset, you yourself can do this. You yourself can create your own mindfulness kind of practices. So let's get started um, because I know I want to dive into the Q&A afterwards. And 
So what I'd ask you to do first is before you get aligned, I call this the MVP exercise, mindset, visualization, and then performance. And you'll understand why um, in a second. So before we uh, do anything, I just want you to like, if you're sitting or standing, I just want you to make sure that, you know, you're a little loose, you know, you know, a little, make sure your back is firm and erect. Um, make sure that, you know, your shoulders are back. I have this problem sometimes um, where my shoulders purposely go like this. And that's something I've had to work on. So take this time to be very conscious of how your body is and just be, be, be loose, but also be, you know, have a good posture, whether you're sitting or standing. Then I want you to just take three quick breaths. Um, depending on your level, I'm going to do simply three breaths in through my nose, out through my nose. You can do it in through your mouth, out through your mouth, in through your mouth, out through your nose. It doesn't matter. Just, I just want you to do a couple breaths and you can, I'm going to count one, two, three. So let's just start. And if you can have your eyes closed for the remainder of this, that would be great. Okay. I'm ready to do the three breathes, breathings. One. Two, three, keep your eyes closed. You're now entering the MVP. The first stage of MVP is your mind. Where is your mind right now? Is it running around? Is it thinking of many things? Or are you centered? Are you just connected to this moment. That is the goal. So for the next few moments, just quiet your mind and just be connected with this present moment. Just feel the air. Feel just you in your mind and that's it. No distractions. Do this for a few moments. One suggestion during this is to continue doing some light breathing. So for instance, I'm breathing in through my nose and out through my nose several times while we're doing this. So give yourself a few moments to do that. And I'll explain why in a minute. Now we're gonna get into visualization. When you can visualize, you can actualize and realize because anyone who is clear with where they're going in their life, I have found has sometimes seen that they can plan out things in advance versus letting the day plan things out for them. As much as possible, we should visualize things that are important in our life. It's not about making the exact incident, moments, steps happen, but it's about the practice of foreseeing things happening and taking actions, whether purposely or subconsciously. And the more you can visualize, the more you get used to being a creator of your world, even if it's only by an inch, it's the way you should be because you are in this world to be an agent of change. You are in this world to be someone who wants to be impactful. We're all here at this amazing startup of the year, three day event to either build a company, fund a company or help a company or just learn so you can do something in one of those three or other options that I haven't described yet. So that's why it's important to visualize. So for today, let's do a simple visualization. Let's just visualize a contact that you want to make at this conference. Visualize yourself virtually and visualize meeting that person who comes to your mind. It could be someone you already have in mind, 
Or it could be a certain type of person. It could be an entrepreneur. It could be an investor. It could be one of the organizers. It could be a press person. But I want you to visualize this person and what this person can do to elevate whatever it is you came for this conference for. So visualize that person in your head for a few moments. Hopefully you have this person in your head now. I want you to now visualize the art of reaching out to them. This could be video, email, text, whatever you prefer to do. See, there's no rules in this exercise. So don't worry about not having that person's number or not having the ability to video reach out to them. It doesn't matter. This is your universe. This is your space. You'll find a way, believe me. When there's a will, there's a way. So visualize yourself reaching out to this person and asking for whatever it is you feel they can help you with. Because we are a team. It's not about me. It's about we. Always. So do this for a little bit. Now I'm going to ask you to open your eyes in a few moments. And this is the third part, which is perform. So let's take a recap. The first step is to get into the right mind. Get connected with yourself. Be present. Ignore the clutter or abolish the clutter or whatever you need to do just to be present in this moment. And the second stage, visualization. You visualize someone that you want to meet at this conference that can make a positive dent in your life, however you want to do that. Now, this last phase, when I ask you to open your eyes in the count of three, I want you to write out, whether it's on your phone or on a piece of paper, who that person is and what they can help you with. And the rest is all gravy. The more people you talk to about it, there's a chance that this will happen. So on the count of three, I want you to wake up and write this down. One, two, three. Wake up, open your eyes, and write down who you thought would be impactful for you for this conference. I'm gonna do it too, by the way. I will join you. Is it okay if I type it? It's, you can do whatever you want, man, as long as it's written out. Okay, so I hope everyone got to do that exercise. Um, normally, I would go a little longer and it'd go a little more depth, but because of the time, I wanted to just be succinct and respect uh, the time frame. But what we had just done is a very simple way of planning ahead what you need to do to be successful with your day. Now, you can visualize things such as a meeting, you know, a sales pitch. I visualized before this this literally this whole thing. Um, I have a, I have my own kind of rituals I like to do before any presenting, but, um, it's two o'clock my time, but one to one thirty, I did a, I did a little breathing exercise and I did some, I closed my mind and I asked myself like, what is something that is going to be meaningful for me to do here? And I visualized like the map and how it looked. And then I wrote down these steps. In fact, this whole exercise was stuff that I wrote down on my notepad during that 30 minute exercise in the P part but you can make it that abstract or you can make it that specific. Like this example where you visualize in advance who you want to meet. And I think this is really important because what's cool about conferences, especially virtual ones is that there is a, you, you can have a higher chance if you know how to hustle, right, to find certain people and reach out to them. But it's also about what, what can they do to help you? Like they're not, they're obviously going to talk to you because everyone wants to give back and pay it forward. Usually people who do these events, but it's like, but what specifically are you going to ask this person? Like how much time, you know, the person's busy or the group of people is busy or the purpose of the meeting, you know, you don't have more than a minute, whether it's an email in person. So that's why visualizing this is there. So it's a little example of how you can use a very popular mindful technique called visualization, which is done by literally CEOs, athletes, some of the most well-known kind of even spiritual leaders that many of us have studied throughout our upbringing have utilized this gift and many more. Well, thank you for leading us through that exercise. I, I can't tell you how nice it's been. 
a busy day leading up to the kickoff of Summit. Um, and I think I know everybody on our team could really use the opportunity to just kind of stop and ground ourselves and collect ourselves. Um, and when, when you're busy, it's hard to give yourself the time to do that, I think. And it's, um, it seems like that's often the time that we need it the most. Yeah, you know, one thing I've learned with, um, with time now is I, the reason why I love doing these exercises is that it allows me to better understand when I can be optimal and when I'm not to be optimal. So there's some people who are the 5 a.m., they're done working out by 6 a.m. and they're out the door. And there's some people who work in the mornings and they get stuff done in the afternoons workout wise. Or there's some people who, and I've often seen this with writers, um, they like to write late afternoon to the end of the evening. I've written some books and when I'm in writing book mode, I actually do that. It actually does work. But most of the time I'm, I'm pretty normal with my mornings, except Mondays. I, I tend to sleep in a little more just because I'm, I'm aware of my body, but I'll work later that day for me. But I think the more work you can do on yourself, these little routines, the more you can understand when is the time to do stuff and when's the time to like take a break or do other things. So obviously being in a startup is a really stressful environment and there's all kinds of demands and there's always things you could be or should be working on. Um, you know, in addition to the, to this exercise that you gave us, are there other suggestions that you have for people in the startup world about how they can deal with stress? Yes. And I want to give a disclaimer. Um, everything I'm sharing with you, there is so many amazing teachers out there. This is one of the greatest things about what I call the YouTube era. I think before we used to talk about the, you know, the, the information era or the IT era, or I call this the YouTube era because you literally can find really good content on what I'm about to tell you. So one of the best things that I do, and I've done this twice already today, is I do a version of breath work. Now, I'm going to give you a rudimentary reason why, from a scientific reason why breath work is good for you. So there's certain nutrients that you put in your body every day, like water. One of the biggest nutrients you go put inside your body every day is oxygen or oxidating your body, breathing in, breathing out, you know, and there's a reason why some of the most fit likes, whether they're singers or the most fit athletes have some of the best breathing, like routines and habits and lung power capacity, because they're just accustomed to doing these breathing exercises. I recommend a, you know, five to 15 minute breathing kind of exercise. Um, one person I'm a big fan of, and again, I'm a, I'm a student on this, um, but I'm blessed to be, I think my gift is I like, to, I'm good at communicating the abstract and simplifying it. I think that's, that's kind of my purpose in life. I feel as I, as I getting wiser and older, and I'm not old by any means, but I'm just like to say that just to be funny, but I feel that um, Wim Hof is a good one. W I M. H O F F. And, you know, there's so many cool guides on him. There's so many, you know, you can, I think Goop did a show on him, um, that Gwyneth Paltrow show where they talked to him. He's, he's, he's definitely in another realm of thinking, but his, his, why I've used his breath work whenever I feel like I might get stressed or I feel like I'm over cluttered, whatnot. And what's great about this breath exercise is that it's on tap anytime, anywhere. And so it's a good, it's a good uh, precursor for, you know, just to help set yourself up um, because you had asked one of the, you had asked me, you know, you had said about stressful times with entrepreneurship and all that. And I could totally relate. Um, but I think the more you do these things, the more self belief you have in yourself. I think a lot of insecurities that entrepreneurs have regardless of what stage you're at is they don't have, they don't have certainty on themselves. Why do you have not certainty? It's because you're letting the outside world control you again. Again, the whole goal of all these things is to be connected with your inner self and then to use that inner energy to like ex it communicate to the outer energy or the outer world or this world. Well, and oftentimes if we, if we have that mindset that we're coming in and, and it's, it's really easy to just kind of go down that path of doubt and just kind of feeding yourself. Um, and I think that that's one of those places where just kind of stopping and even trying to be aware of what we're thinking because it's so easy to just same thing with breathing it's so easy to just breathe and breathe all day long and not have anything um not stop to think about it same thing with our mind it's just it allows us to control ourselves so what you're saying is just you know stopping and taking the time to kind of reflect can be a profound practice in and of itself so what would you say is uh, I, I know the, uh, for a lot of people, the terms meditation and mindfulness kind of get used interchangeably. What, what do you see as the difference between the two of them? 
That's a great question. And one of my favorite questions I love answering because I feel more people need to hear this. And I'm someone who, who still is, I sometimes ask myself this, but here's what I've learned. Um, the goal of mindfulness or the goal of being mindful is to be present with yourself. Now, some people call that being connected with your heart. Some people call it, you know, I'm in this flow state of mind or some is from a spiritual standpoint, like I'm in a, you know, I'm in this third eye, like kind of level where I'm just connected with this, you know, being or worlds beyond this world or universe, I should say. It doesn't, that's what's great about mindfulness, that there is a religious version, there's a scientific, there is just someone who's into just self-growth, they just want to understand their body. Every, all those things lead to the same thing, which I'm saying, which is just being present with yourself. That's what's great about mindfulness, just being present with yourself. Now, in order to be present with yourself, there are tools or there's things that you can do. Just like if you work out a certain way, if you eat a certain way, those tools, which I call them, will get your body to look a certain way. So if you look at mindfulness in the same kind of example, where if mindfulness is the goal to be present with yourself, then what are the tools you can use to do that? That's where meditation comes in. That's where breath work comes in. That's where the visualization exercise comes in. Now, if you want to get totally geeky, you can say, well, okay, well, meditation, breath works a form of meditation. I guess you could say that or visualization is a form of vet meditation. Fine. It, it, whatever you want to label it as. But the point is, is that these tools, breathing, meditating, um, visualizing like that MVP exercise or, or listening to other inspiring content and, and just connecting with yourself. That's the goal. All of this to get you to be in that mindful state. So there's so mindfulness kind of encompasses all these different strategies and meditation is one of them. Are there, you know, if, if we find ourselves in a situation where, um, you know, perhaps we're, we're in a meeting and we're in a public place and it, it doesn't feel appropriate to close our eyes and, and step back, are there ways that we can, are there any tips or strategies that you have for helping people engage with being mindful in that situation? My favorite one is walking. Walking. Honestly, um, there's, there's that. I've started to understand this recently. Um, one of my new goals right now is to become a better runner. I'm not a good runner at all. Um, I want to really master running very well. It's just, just a little challenge I've, I've given myself. And I have to say in the last few weeks, I started to do more running. There's this thing called runner's high. I love it. Oh my goodness. Or when you're on a bike and you're biking for a long time and you know, that, 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 that like that, I don't know zone. it's partly yeah yeah that zone yeah. right or or for some of us uh, I'm a big beach guy just walking in the beach and connecting with that wave it gets to a point where I'm just so focused on me and the sound of the wave or even the sound doesn't even exist it's just me and the world that's another mindful activity so that's what's great it's whatever can get you to be in that present state but I've often found that in your situation to be very specific whether it's at a conference or whether it's in a where I'm in an office like I'm in an office right now and I have a meeting at about you know 40 minutes my time um, right before the meeting I'm gonna go for a walk because I want to be in the most present state I'm gonna be excited from this of course but I want to I want to realign myself and get so present so that when I'm with someone it's gonna do that one other thing um, that I feel we can do is spend more time on the prep work so what I mean is this and again I'm I'm I am just sharing experiences that I've gone through and I've worked on and I've learned from others sleep is very imperative so simple hacks is, you know, do you have your cell phone on airplane mode far away? Or do you have your phone on with ring or vibrator when you sleep? If your sleep gets affected, then it's harder for you to be in that mindful present state or even want to attempt it. So, but that's the prep work. It's the work you did before. Or, you know, if you know that you need to uptake your exercise, movement, yoga, working out, things like that, do that when you can, because that helps you get into that state of mind. In fact, if I didn't work out today, I don't know if I'd be in this state that I'm in right now because all these things are tools to get you constantly focused on being mindful. So it seems like, you know, there's a real strategy around kind of coming to our senses almost and, and getting out of our head and getting into our body. And that can be so many different things, be it, you know, exercise or even just feeling the breath, but that it, it, doesn't have to be anything profound. It's just kind of something that gets us to, to stop going down this path of just mindlessness, I suppose. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, you know, you said something earlier about 
entrepreneurship and, you know, building a company. I'm going to be the first one to tell you that I've had a lot of uh, strikeouts, if you want to call that. Okay. If we're using baseball, I've had some strikeouts. Okay. Like Frank will love that. Like oh and ten, okay, whatever you are, maybe oh and twenty, but it doesn't matter because I've also had some hits too that that evens it out. That's what's great about entrepreneurship. It's not about making every time work. It's about learning and growing, and then getting better at it. And I can tell you that almost the number one attribute to all the strikeouts I've had, it's not because I didn't raise money well. It's not because of oh founder dilemmas, or it's not because. I didn't have enough experience. I mean, these are all the things one can tell themselves. I'm literally, I've done all that. In retrospect, the biggest mistake or the biggest thing that's made me strike out has been when I'm not pronounced. It's been when I am not living with a confidence that comes from within. It's about following external trends. It's about using, um, you know, what others are telling me or it's using my environment to blame what's happening. Let me tell you something. Right now in this pandemic, there have been amazing businesses that have come out. 2008 depression or recession or however you want to, whatever terminology you want to use was the rise of some very prominent companies. One is Tesla, other, you know, some social networking came around between 2008 to 2010 timeframe and like things were still resettling. So my, why? Because at the time people were present on what they need to focus on and they didn't let their environment control them. Yes, it's harder for some of us. Yes, it's still hard for many. And my heart goes out on a personal level for anyone dealing with the pandemic. But when it comes to your business hustle, if there is a will, there's a way. And the more you refine, the more present you are yourself, and the less you blame the world and focus on what you have, you have a higher chance of being more successful. So, I mean, it almost sounds like what you're saying is that this strategy of uh, – you know, working on your mindfulness is, is almost in some ways as valuable as, you know, your business skills or, or any number of soft skills that you might bring into this practice of starting Look, a startup. I'm a, I'm a competitive person, not competitive with other people. I'm competitive with myself. I, I, to the best I can, I set high standards for myself. And the way I set high standards for myself is not only do I get things done, but am I the most optimal version of myself? Am I the most present version of myself? Because it's, then I can give the best value, whether it's to team members, to customers, to even programs like this. And that all comes through basic mindfulness activities. All these things I mentioned to you, they all take 10 minutes or under. That's what's great about it. You can go more, of course, but I'm just telling you that if you're blaming mindfulness in time, no, I'm sorry. You have 10 minutes in your life. That's how much it takes you to make a cup of coffee or drink water or do all the things you need to do when you get up in the morning. Well, Ash, we only have a, a couple more minutes here. Um, and so I, I know that you have a special offer for everybody yep. uh, as part of the Start of the Year Summit, and that's a 21-day mindful challenge program via email uh, where people get in performance-inspired video uh, that's about 10 minutes or less every day. Uh, and some of the subjects uh, include emotional intelligence, energy management, and even breath work. Can you tell us a little bit about this offer and uh, why you think people yeah. should check it out? No, thank you for that. And I appreciate you mentioning that. Yes. It's a wonderful so, offer. Thank you for oh, sharing it with everybody. No, no problem. So um, one of the things that we have done with Peak Mindful is, so we started off um, creating really great content. We have a great content app. But one thing we learned um, is that people love challenges. People love you know, a way to stay accountable, a way to focus on like, okay, if I can do this one kind of habit and develop a rudimentary understanding, then hopefully you'll have a, the ability to continue doing it in some way or the other. So we thought the moniker of doing these in 21 day kind of challenges is the way to go. So this program, again, it's just for 10 minutes a day and you have, it's basically a video that's going to be in your inbox and explains in the email what you're going to get. There's no, there's no, we're not charging you anything like that. We're, we're, honestly building this out to build a community of people who want to build challenges and habits. It's kind of our new business model for what I'm doing with peak mindful. And, um, but yeah, it's just a cool gift. It's unique content. Anyone who signs up, we personally created this, um, in the last few weeks. And so you, we have never been out there before. And so, yeah, I'm super excited. If you want to give mindfulness 10 minutes a day of your life for 21 days, please sign up. Thank you so much, Ash and Shaw. Great job in the interview there. I'm sure our listeners can take your thoughts and incorporate them into our personal and professional lives. It's so important to have that, uh, that space and mental kind of wellness and uh, just taking care of yourself ultimately. So appreciate those thoughts and everyone can draw from that what they will and incorporate into their daily lives. So thanks so much. 
Well, I hope uh, you enjoyed this episode and you took something or found something interesting. And if you did find it interesting, please do share it. Uh, we appreciate any reviews on all the different platforms, but also just sharing it with somebody that you think might find it helpful. We believe in sharing is caring and we want to spread the message to those that uh, might need this, might need this. And so please help us out with that. And we appreciate all the support we can get. And if you have a startup and you, or just an idea and want to get it going, today is the best day to start up. Not tomorrow, not the next day, get it going iterate it'll you know it'll start to kind of create a create its own like legs and continue to to change over time and in doing so i encourage you to join our startup community for access to support expert advice resources as we look to help elevate your startup and keep you going every single day so go to soty.link forward slash apply and become part of our community today we look forward to seeing you soon until next time i'm frank Gruber signing off thanks again for listening wishing the best of luck and future success in all of your ventures Thanks for listening to the Startup of the Year podcast. Be sure to subscribe and we'll be back with another episode soon. 